Hello. On behalf of the Defense Logistics Agency and all our leaders and team members around the world, welcome to the virtual 2021 DLA Hall of Fame induction program. I'm Kathy Rem from DLA Human Resources. The DLA Hall of Fame is a means for us to preserve our history and promote DLA values. This year's program is even more significant as we are celebrating the 60th anniversary of our agency's founding. This is a true celebration of excellence. The five dedicated public servants we're honoring here help set the standards and values for the agency as we know it today. During the program, we'll be welcoming inductees and current DLA senior leaders from several locations. Now, please welcome our DLA Director, Navy Vice Admiral Michelle Skubik. DLA teammates, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I'm thrilled to host the induction of the Class of 2021 into the DLA Hall of Fame. And what a year to be inducted. It's DLA's diamond anniversary. For over six decades, DLA has remained true to its core principles of support to the warfighter and value to the nation. We're proud of our legacy, providing quality, proactive, global logistics at the right time, at the right place, and at the right cost. With a dedicated and talented workforce, we look forward to a future of continued world-class service to our warfighters and our other valued customers and partners. Happy anniversary, DLA. And congratulations to our five newest Hall of Fame inductees, which brings the total to 131 since DLA's 13th director, Army Lieutenant General Henry Glisson, established this tradition in 1998. During the first Hall of Fame ceremony, Lieutenant General Glisson said, DLA has a great legacy, and our inductees are largely responsible for that. They set the standards, inspired many people, and left us a great organization to build on. They left us every reason to be proud. We are very proud of the DLA Hall of Fame class of 2021. Our recipients represent four major subordinate commands and one J Code directorate. All five served at DLA for a total of 164 years. That's an impressive amount of experience, especially when you consider the quality of their service during their incredible careers. To our honorees, it's teammates like you who over the years have been key to DLA's success. You set the bar high and gave us all standards to aspire to. We are honored to celebrate your contributions. To those watching today, I want to thank you for helping us celebrate the legacy of excellence these exceptional teammates left for all of us. Their stories remind us of what selfless service is all about. And with that, we bring you the DLA Hall of Fame Class of 2021. Our first 2021 inductee is Ms. Denise Canada, whose 34-year DLA career saw her rise through the ranks from a GS2 supply clerk to the Senior Technical Quality Advisor in DLA Aviation Supplier Operations. Ms. Canada made a measurable impact on the Time to Award initiative in significantly reducing technical blocks to historical lows and advancing a more efficient procurement process. And she established technical quality seminars, which still serve as a consequential training, information sharing, and cross-process awareness wellspring for the entire acquisition and technical quality community. Air Force Brigadier General David Sanford, commander of DLA Aviation, will tell us a little about why he thinks Ms. Canada is deserving of induction into the DLA Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame uh, here at DLA is, is an opportunity, I think, uh, for us to give back to our workforce and, and those folks that have really risen to the occasion, gone above and beyond, and, and done lasting, enduring work both for the agency, which then translates to support, obviously, to the warfighter. And so Denise, from Ms. Canada in this case, um, has definitely gone above and beyond. Uh, she has been a true servant leader. Um, she has always been available for her folks. She has promoted her folks. And in, by doing that, she's really laid the foundations for making sure the future was there. The future leaders were in place uh, to both replace her and to outlive me as well. Um, and I think that's the testament of a great leader and why she um, deserves such a high honor from our agency. 
Denise's uh, lasting contributions are definitely in the tech quality area. Uh, you could probably refer to her as Miss Tech, Qu tech Quality, and I mean that with, with uh, just sincere admi admiration um, because Denise is really, um, she understands it from a functional standpoint or a, a technical standpoint, but she also understands what it takes to get people to, under to, to learn it, to know it, and to live it. Um, and what that means is it actually translates to better support and better quality for our, our warfighter. And so the enduring processes that, that Denise uh, put in place to include a tech quality council, we're still using those in aviation today. And that's just testament to her leadership and her uh, functional expertise. Denise, I just want to say congratulations. Um, it is such a privilege to be associated uh, with this honor and to just be a small part of being able to help bestow this honor upon you. Uh, this is just an, a great opportunity for the agency to say thank you for all your leadership, for your hard work, and for your dedication over 34 plus years uh, to this agency. I mean, I don't know if you can imagine you came in as a GS2 typist um, and you rose through the ranks and now you're and you led our tech quality section here at Aviation and you laid the foundations for that tech quality piece that we still rely on today. And I just want to say thank you for again for everything you've done. This honor is well deserved and just a testament to uh, a, a very just great and fruitful career. Thank you for everything. Good afternoon. I'm Denise Canada. I'm honored and humbled to be inducted into this prestigious class, DLA Hall of Fame. Thank you to DLA leadership, Vice Admiral Skubik, Brigadier General Sanford, Mr. Lilly, and Mr. Moore for initiating and accepting the nomination. To my family and friends, thank you for your love and support throughout my career. As a widow, mother of five beautiful daughters, one handsome son-in-law, and five adorable grandchildren, the songwriter said it well. I am blessed, better than blessed. Praise the Lord. When I peep back down memory lane to a hot July 20th, 1981 date, I entered the gates of then Defense General Supply Center. I took an oath that day in which I stood behind and was committed to for 34 years. I started this career journey as a GS2 clerk typist in the Directorate of Technical Operation typing pool with Dars Purdy. I met some great men and very few women. I remember it was only two females in the storage branch, which were the quality assurance specialists. I befriended my first mentor, Garland Mines, whom is still one of my great friends today. Traveling down to the depot quality control office as a supply clerk, one of my most noted experiences, learning the supply chain function from the receiving, storage, and distribution processes. I returned to the center with a stop in installation services and back to Directorate of Technical Operations as a quality assurance specialist intern. There I was assigned to work with another mentor, Margaret Donnelly, whom is still a great friend today. I next find myself moving into the Deputy Product Center leader role with another mentor and dear friend, Alma Charles. We alongside Chuck Martino, led Product Center 7 incomparably to the number one product center for two years, which ultimately birthed the Strategic Supplier Alliances and Product Center 7. Next stop, rotation assignment to finance, another dedicated team, and back home to technical quality business system modernization. A constant reminder, what TQ does every day matters. TQ community is very passionate in warfighter support and mission. BSM was challenging with tech blocks against procurements. And working with my enterprise counterparts, Land and Maritime, Janelle Lyons, and troop support, John Scribanji, what an awesome team. We worked diligently weekends included to resolve the many issues with blocked procurements. Time to award was critical and the mission of warfighter support was the number one focus, a quality, timely procurement. The Aviation TQ team within BSM were extraordinary in resolving block procurements. 
This team led me to having one of the best climate culture surveys on the center. I'm a firm believer in the golden rule, do unto others as you will have them do unto you. Coming to the finish line full circle to operations back to where I began. TQ is an intricate part of the acquisition process. Leading this group allowed us to become great contributors in decreasing time to award. I am proud of my years in the workforce at DLA. Thank you again for this prestigious honor. Thanks to all my team members throughout my career. I am so grateful and blessed to have worked with an A-team year after year. May God continue to bless you and your families. Mr. Christos Kosval began his federal career as a GS3 student trainee and worked his way up the ranks to become Deputy Director of Procurement Process Support at DLA Troop Support. Mr. Kosval provided strategic oversight on some of the most complex acquisitions within DLA, including prime vendor acquisitions and multiple award contracts. Leaders from all the troop support supply chains consulted with him regularly to map out acquisition strategies and techniques, and he was instrumental in implementing several procurement systems, including e-procurement, which is still in use today. Mr. Richard Ellis, Deputy Commander of DLA Troop Support, will discuss some of Mr. Kosval's contributions to his organization. Chris is very deserving. His contributions in acquisition process improvement have been tremendous. Uh, not only in troop support, but DLA and Prize as a whole. Uh, Chris is a great leader, a consummate uh, acquisition professional. He uh, has a keen understanding of the rules and regulations of acquisition, but he also continuously tried to improve the pr acquisition process. Uh, his number one priority was always to support the warfighter, provide outstanding support to the warfighter. And at the end of the day, he's just a really nice guy. Uh, every every uh, holiday, every uh, major holiday, he would buy flowers for the support staff. So, uh, just a great overall guy and well deserving of this uh, recognition. I think there's two contributions that uh, uh, Chris will be known for, remembered by, and one is the, his support of uh, acquisition um, automation. Uh, first, in 1986, he was involved in uh, production and deployment of DPACs, which was the very first uh, contract writing system. And then again in 2014, uh, he was in involved in the development and production, testing and deployment of e-procurement, which was the follow-on system. Uh, additionally to that, uh, I think he will be also known for his uh, you know, process improvement and, and contract um, uh, to war time. Uh, he was uh, supported that at troop support um, reducing uh, time to award by 65%. Chris, congratulations on your well-deserved selection to the DLA Hall of Fame. We here at Troop Support are very proud of you and your many accomplishments. Thank you for your 37 years of dedicated service and support to the warfighter. Warfighter always. Thank you, Mr. Ellis, for those kind words, and thank you General Shirley, Mr. Kenny, and Mr. Ratner, and the rest of the DLA Troop Support Leadership Team for nominating me for this honor. I was very surprised when Vice Admiral Skubik called me to notify me of this recognition. I want to thank her for taking the time out of her busy schedule to reach out and congratulate me. I also want to congratulate all the other inductees today and to thank the DLA Selecting Committee for deeming us all worthy of this recognition. Special thanks also go to Lisa Shields, who nominated me for the DLA Troop Support Hall of Fame. Not only did she provide me exceptional support uh, working with her, she went above and beyond after I retired to nominate me for this recognition. I'm forever grateful to her and all the others that endorsed the nomination. I'm truly proud of my time at DLA and even prouder of the people I worked with and for during that time. I started as a GS3 student trainee under a Drexel University co-op program at the Defense Industrial Supply Center. Then on to the Defense Supply Center Philadelphia, which then became DLA Troop Support. 
I was fortunate to uh, work with a wide range of fascinating commodities during my career. First with hardware type items that supported weapon systems that our warfighters use, and then with all the Philadelphia commodities that literally touch the warfighter every day. The insights into the uh, customers, the contractors, the industrial base, and the characteristics of these items is truly fascinating and was a never-ending learning experience. While I was working, I would proudly tell my friends and relatives of all the accomplishments of DLA in supporting the warfighter through various contingencies, such as Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm. Of course, after 9-11, the global war on terror and all the operations supporting it. Most recently, of course, the support of the humanitarian efforts for natural disasters, not only here, but also abroad. And of course, DLA's exceptional support in support of the war on the pandemic. And I would thank DLA for all they've done for the American people. My accomplishments would not have been possible without the challenges and mentorship of leaders. I'm truly humbled to be able to join two of my mentors that are already in the DLA Hall of Fame, Judy Hiriliak and Dick Hoffman. Judy was a great leader, had a hard work ethic and unwavering integrity. She was my role model and she's the one that pushed me to apply for the DLA mid-level intern program. And barely out of that program, Dick Hoffman, who was an IT visionary, assigned me to be the first section chief of the prototype section for the DLA pre-award contracting system, DPAX. Without their assignments and mentorship uh, that served as a stepping stone to my, the rest of my career, today would not be possible. Of course, nothing would be possible with all the, without all the great people that I've worked with throughout my career, whether it be in directorates, uh, commodity business units, supply chains, or procurement process support. Their hard work, flexibility, and ingenuity were inspiration to me. And my fondest memories will be of the teamwork that we shared uh, throughout those years. Finally, I want to thank my wife, Jean, who has supported me throughout my career. We met here at Defense Industrial Supply Center at the time, and she has supported me and put up with my long hours at work. She even sacrificed by uh, agreeing to be reassigned from a position that she loved in order to pave the way for me to accept a promotion and avoid a conflict of interest. I will forever be grateful to her. Thank you again for this great honor. I want to stay connected with DLA through my association with the DLA Foundation, a nonprofit that provides scholarships and uh, to grandchildren, children, and nieces and nephews of current and former DLA employees. It's one small way I can give back to DLA. Again, thank you for this honor, and I wish uh, DLA and all its great workforce success in the years to come. Thank you. Mr. Thomas Legere's career with DLA started as a GS5 property marketing specialist and culminated in his serving as DLA Disposition Services Director of Disposal Operations. He drove major innovations, establishing the Controlled Property Verification Office, transferring function of the Law Enforcement Support Office, supporting numerous natural disasters, and standing up the consolidated long-term storage for DLA Disposition Services at Columbus. He helped move DLA Disposition Services forward to support the warfighter and to provide innovative disposal solutions for the future. Mr. Michael Cannon, Director of DLA Disposition Services, will tell us a little bit about why he nominated Mr. Legere for induction into the DLA Hall of Fame. Our inductee this year is Mr. Tom Legere. Uh, Tom spent 32 years in DLA Disposition Services he actually came to us from Fish and Wildlife because they uh, would lay him off in the winters in Michigan because it's so cold and he needed a full-time job. And he was going to do that for a couple of years and 32 years later, uh, he retired as our director of operations. In those 32 years, he oversaw some very significant improvements in the disposal network. 
Uh, he led the transition of the law enforcement support office from DLA headquarters out here to Battle Creek. Um, he helped design the, our first commercial venture uh, sales program where we do public sales through a large commercial venture instead of trying to do it individually at 50 or 60 or 80 sites. Not only did that help us financially, it helped us with fraud, waste, and abuse by, by minimizing that, but that foresight that he had is also helping us right now with audit because it's much easier to audit a single commercial venture as it is to audit 50 or 60 independent operations. One of the operational impacts that Tom left on the organization uh, was the development of our long-term storage facility at Columbus. There was an issue with Congress and legal with the, the release of certain types of controlled property. And there was a concern about disposing of them if we needed them later, and other concerns about selling them and releasing them uh, to the public. So he developed a, a method and an operation whereby we could store this stuff for long term uh, at a location where it was secure, and then we could reuse it to military as required. So over the course of the time that we had to do that, uh, we've reused millions of dollars of property back to Department of Defense. Now over the years, we've been able to work through some of the congressional and legal issues, and we don't need to store that vast amount of property for that length of time. But the fact that we have that facility has allowed us to convert the facility into one that supports the warfighter today by giving us an overflow operation for our trucks. So if a site at a military base is overwhelmed with turn-ins, we now have the capacity within the network to absorb that work at the facility that Tom brought on board uh, several years ago for a totally different purpose. But I will tell you his most lasting impact on DLA is the leaders in DLA today. He was a leader who developed leaders. If you look at the key leaders, senior leaders across DLA Disposition Services, almost to a person, they list Tom Lagerie as one of their mentors, coaches, leaders, supervisors, cajolers, someone who developed them into the leaders they are today. And, and to me, that's his lasting impact because they, in turn, are gonna develop tomorrow's leaders. Tom, I wanna congratulate you on your well-deserved selection to the DLA Hall of Fame. You're one of the rare disposition services individuals who had an impact not just on this part of the organization, but on all of DLA, and it is well-deserved. I wanna wish you and, and Mary uh, the best in your retirement, and the next time you're in Battle Creek, I'll be happy to help you add to your beer can collection. Hi, I'm Tom Leisure, and I'm coming to you from the foothills of the Smoky Mountains. I want to say how humbled I am to receive such an honor and thank Vice Admiral Skubik and the folks of the DLA for inducting me into the DLA Hall of Fame. I'd also like to thank Mr. Cannon and all the folks back at Battle Creek for putting me in for this award. Now, an award like this is not due to one's own accomplishments, but it's more like a team award that is, reflects all the efforts of those around me that helped shape my career. So I need to thank all the supervisors and command staff for their guidance and their mentoring and their leadership. My coworkers for their support and of course, all the great folks who worked for me over the years, they were the ones who got the mission done. They were the ones who implemented the initiatives. I couldn't have done it without them. Of course, it helps to great, have a great team support at home as well. So I'd like to give a shout out to my daughters, Julie and Pamela, for their support. They're the reasons I went to work every day. And to my wife, Mary Legere, a DLA employee who deserves one of these awards based on her own merits. The hardest 10 months I had working at DLA was waiting for her to come back from Iraq after establishing the DRMOs over there. You know, I never meant to work at DLA. I started my career in the prairie pothole country of Northwestern Minnesota. But after working part-time for four years, I decided to take a position at DLA Battle Creek with the intention of rotating back after I had one year in and permanent status. 
So that was my intention when I walked up those steps in September of 1980. What I hadn't expected to find was an organization of hardworking folks doing a very important mission. And what I hadn't expected to find was a work atmosphere that was more like family than work. And it was hard to leave that family 30 plus years later when I left the building for the last time. Over the course of my career, I've had the privilege of presiding over retirement ceremonies. And what I tried to stress to those attendants, particularly if there was family members present, was the important work that their father or mother or spouse did for the government, did for the country. I think too often we don't tell those we love or our acquaintances or friends the important mission that DLA does, providing the warfighter with just about everything they need to do, to do their job, and then having their back when it comes time to disposing of those items in the proper manner. That mission hits a little closer to home nowadays, as we're blessed to have a son-in-law who's an Army Special Forces. What you do helps him do his job better. And it's important that you keep doing that job, not just for him and all his fellow airmen, soldiers, and sailors, but for their families and for this country. So I want to thank DLA again for this great award and to say it was such an honor to work for such a great organization. Mr. James McClarity spearheaded the program to sustain the Secretary of Defense's number one weapon system priority, the family of mine-resistant ambush-protected vehicles, resulting in unparalleled logistics support and saving countless lives of American and allied warfighters. He shepherded the DLA Land and Maritime Workforce through periods of transformation and stress while strengthening workplace culture and improving customer satisfaction measures. His contributions to the Defense Logistics Agency's mission success have been significant and enduring. Navy Rear Admiral Kristen Fabery, commander of DLA Land and Maritime, will discuss how Mr. McClarity's knowledge and experience led to the accomplishments that brought him to the DLA Hall of Fame. Mr. Jim McClarity is so deserving of being inducted into the DLA Hall of Fame for numerous reasons. Uh, the first of which is his efforts that he spearheaded with support for the mine resistant ambush protected vehicle line. Uh, that was really a huge effort done here throughout all of DLA, the entire agency, but specifically at Land and Maritime. And his efforts in getting the rapid uh, export of all of those support items for the MRAP vehicle out to the field in record time saved countless American and allied warfighters over the years in Afghanistan and Iraq. So huge effort on his part to really make an impact to the warfighter, which is our mission at DLA. Some of Mr. McClarity's lasting contributions to DLA uh, absolutely revolve around people. He has made a huge impact and his legacy is felt even today. He had a huge focus on increasing the diversity portfolio here at Land and Maritime, improving our minority hires by 10% in our corporate intern program and tripling the number of disabled people that we have hired here at Land and Maritime. He also was a great leader in the leadership program uh, for all of DLA writ large, which affected 26,000 associates across the agency. Mr. McClarity, I can't thank you enough for the legacy you have left here at DLA Land and Maritime. It was an honor to meet you personally and to see the leadership that you exude even today and your love for DLA and all of our amazing associates across the agency. Thank you so much for being the father and orchestrator of the DLA Land and Maritime way. Congratulations. Vice Admiral Skubik, Mr. Bunn, Rear Admiral Fabry, Mr. Watson, Mr. Brown, my fellow Hall of Fame inductees and DLA associates past and present, thank you from the bottom of my heart for this humbling recognition and Admiral Fabry for that overly generous introduction. One thing life teaches us is that there are times when words are insufficient, even useless, 
and today is very much one of those times. Saul Bellow, an American Nobel Prize for Literature winner, wrote that, quote, everyone needs their memories. They keep the wolf of insignificance from the door. This induction ceremony, culminating 47 years in the Defense Department, the last 22 fabulous years in DLA, has forever slain that wolf. The list of people to thank is endless and time prohibitive, so let me quickly mention four names that represent the hierarchy of relationships that blessed me during my DLA years. First, of course, is my beautiful bride, Miss Emerald, the number one influence in my life. An inspirational federal employee in her own right, an Air Force F-16 depot engine mechanic, and subsequently a C-17 production manager, and in DLA, a change management agent during our incredibly complex ERP implementation, and later a J-8 budget analyst. She adroitly managed her own 30-year career, plus our blended family of six kids and 12 grandkids, while I was failing miserably at work-life balance, executing my deputy commander duties. It's been correctly observed that no success can compensate for failure in the home, and Emerald's tireless efforts ensured we didn't violate that maxim. Honey, I love you, thank you. This recognition honors both of us. The second name is Vice Admiral Keith Lippert, representing the nine DLA directors I served, each with their unique but successful leadership styles. Admiral Lippert enjoyed the longest director tenure in DLA history, I believe, but in an uncharacteristically weak moment, promoted me to the senior executive service in 2003. So I'm eternally grateful to him for the chance to lead with the special folks in this agency. The third name is Vice Admiral Michelle Skubik. You may have heard of her. While I retired before she became DLA's director, she was my ninth DSCC DLA Land and Maritime Commander I served as deputy, and she best personifies the multidimensional relationships I enjoyed with almost, but not quite all, my commanders boss, mentor, and friend. From my firsthand close-up experience over 14 months, DLA is enormously blessed to have her at the helm, but you already know that by now. Moreover, I'm thankful the roles of mentor and friend can also be applied to many of my DLA-wide SES GS-15 peers throughout my tenure. Names like Ann Bradway, Dennis Canterbury, Rich Ellis, Twyla Gonzalez, Milt Lewis, my wingman in the DSCC command suite for over eight years and the best thinker I've ever worked with, Charlie Lilly, Don Love, Mike Scott, and supply chain guru extraordinaire Griff Warren, just to name a precious few. The last name to mention is Charles Gator Sharp, a GS-14 acquisition professional in Columbus who passed away exactly one year ago today. He was a dear friend for practically my entire life in Columbus. We ran every morning at 5.30 for over 15 years and completed several marathons together. Charles symbolizes the entire DSCC family, patriotic, incredibly hardworking, and results focused. Someone once observed that timing has a lot to do with the success of a rain dance and my timing in DLA under these incredible leaders and immersed in the amazing land and maritime workforce could not have been better. Acknowledgements of gratitude aside, let me close with these final thoughts. A kaleidoscope of DLA memories nourish me to this day. 9-11, war on terrorism, MRAPs, BRACs, ERP upgrades, disaster relief, and of course, culture. Four years after retiring, I still dream regularly about work. Conversely, as a testament to the grip this agency has on me, I only occasionally re reflect back on my 30 years proudly wearing the Air Force uniform. Finally, to those of you still fortunate enough to be in the arena, faces marred by dust and sweat and blood, to borrow from Teddy Roosevelt's famous citizenship in a republic speech, I envy you. Plato reminds us only the dead have seen the end of war. So DLA's core supply chain support efforts will always be critical and fundamental to the nation's welfare and position in the world. 
That means your daily performance on behalf of the military men and women around the world counts. And as a final exhortation from my grandstand seat, here it comes, Mr. Bunn. Please remember that your world-class logistics performance grows directly out of the positive culture you work so hard to cultivate. Culture isn't just one aspect of the game, a former IBM CEO famously uttered. It is the game. Admiral, Mr. Bunn, Admiral Fabry, Emerald and I sincerely thank you again for this career recognition. No wolves will ever be sighted at our front door. Mr. Stephen Sherman's career led him to serve as Director of Document Services under DLA Information Operations. His efforts brought about enormous savings through transformation and efficiency, and he developed strategies and technologies that reduced infrastructure, accelerated access to critical information, and created shared services to benefit all DOD components. Under his leadership, more than one billion annual hard copies were eliminated, and the organization realized more than $500 million in savings to the Department of Defense. We'll now welcome Ms. Karen Runstrom, Deputy Director of DLA Information Operations, to discuss why she nominated Mr. Sherman for this honor. Steve Sherman is very deserving of being inducted into the DLA Hall of Fame. He served an incredible 39 years with the Department of Defense's printing programs, beginning his career in 1979 as a management intern and retiring as director of DLA Document Services. Steve's accomplishments are many. There are two impressive accomplishments I would like to highlight. First, in 2015, Steve led a remarkable rapid response to the Office of Personnel Management data breach by having Document Services securely and economically print and mail more than 20 million letters. This important action provided vital notification to individuals whose identities were compromised by the breach. Second, Steve led an amazing transformation agenda. He and his team were successful in scanning and converting hundreds of millions of printed pages of documents and records across the DOD. The conversion from paper documents to digital allows records to be searchable, saving organizations countless man hours. This effort included 5 million pages of highly sensitive detainee records from Afghanistan, Iraq, and Guantanamo Bay. Over 5 million pages of documents for the Army Medical Department and School at Fort Sam Houston, and more than 2 million documents for the Naval Facilities Engineering Command Cadastral Modernization Program. What an extraordinary accomplishment. During Steve's tenure with DLA, he oversaw the effort to convert DOD operations from paper-based documents to electronic document management. Under his leadership, over one billion annual hard copies have been eliminated, resulting in significant cost savings, less energy consumption, and less negative environmental impact. Additionally, as an early adopter of electronic document management, Steve ensured that the DOD's printing programs were in lockstep with technological advancements in printing and document management. Steve, I want to congratulate you on your induction to the DLA Hall of Fame. Your dedication, your vision, and your leadership helped propel document services into the great organization it is today. Thank you for your federal service and congratulations. Thanks, Admiral Skubik. Brad Bunn, an old friend, Dr. Ducek, and another old friend, Richard Tabeau, for this nomination and approval. I also want to thank my family, my wife, Marcia, and my kids, Matt and Mary, without which I really could not have a successful career. And finally, Document Services, the organization that I worked for for 38 years, 22 of those years as part of DLA. I am honored and humbled to be included with the Hall of Fame inductees this year. People of great character and commitment. Uh, people in the past, such as May de Vincennes, Tony Paleo, Admiral Lippert, General Glisson, and including friends like Rick Mason, Deb Greger, Walter Thomas, Milt Lewis, and George Allen. 
as well as today, some of today's inductees, such as Jim McClarity. I, I remember throughout my career that we always stand on others' shoulders. And I had mentors, Jim Cherney, John Snoor, George Shaver, and others, as well as partners throughout my career like Max Strauss, Ann Barnes, Greg Shank, John Peterson, and Sean McGill. Throughout my career, I had guiding principles. I knew that I was running a government business and that I had to develop a culture of service. I was in the document business, which is a common denominator all across the Department of Defense and in every function. Indeed, we were involved in, at the White House as well as at the Pentagon. We had offices in both of those locations as well as around the world. There were always three key groups that I knew I had to deal with. Number one was the customer. We had to bring value to the customer every day. And we had to make them want to come to us for our services. The second, of course, were the employees. They had to be nurtured and, and every day and they because they define who we are. But believe me, the leadership of an organization don't define the organization to the customer. It's the employees across the counter and on the phone that are dealing with them every day. And the employees have to deliver our services every day. And finally, our DLA partners. DLA is a matrix organization. And so folks in J1, J6, J8, we were dependent on them to be successful. They were partners with us in our success. In business and in life, most people are in the stands. Few people are in the arena actually struggling and fighting and trying to move forward. Teddy Roosevelt in a famous speech said that the credit goes to the man in the arena whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly. Thanks for the honor and thanks for remembering me. This is the second year in a row we were unable to come together in person to honor our distinguished inductees, but we hope you enjoyed today's program to highlight their impressive contributions. Thank you again to everyone involved in nominating and selecting the 2021 honorees and to everyone who made this virtual event possible. And most importantly, the entire DLA family offers hearty congratulations to the five honorees. Thank you for watching. We'll now hand things back over to our director for closing remarks. What an incredible group. I hope you enjoyed hearing their stories. The success of this great agency over the past 60 years can be attributed directly to the actions of remarkable individuals like our 2021 Hall of Fame inductees. I can say without reservation that they helped lay the foundation for DLA's legacy of excellence. I'd like to thank several people, Ms. Sharon Saunders, Mr. Billy Keeler and the J1 team, and so many others for organizing this year's Hall of Fame. I also want to thank Mr. Joe Yazwa, Ms. Newton Chada, and the public affairs team for all the work and creativity that has gone into making this video and to everyone who worked tirelessly behind the scenes to make this event possible, thank you. To our inductees, Denise, Christos, Jim, Thomas, and Steven, thank you. You are awe-inspiring, as are all 131 members of the DLA Hall of Fame, and to everyone on the DLA team. Thank you for what you do each and every day for our warfighters and our nation. Thank you for watching, and until next time, Warfighter always. It was launched by a handwritten memo and made its first home in buildings no one else wanted. But there was no denying the vision of its founders or the hard work of thousands of men and women who for over 60 years have built on that vision.
And today, the Defense Logistics Agency carries on a legacy that is forged by history and focused on the future.